Many of you may be confused by what is a Labrador Retriever? What is an American Labrador? What is a British Labrador? The Labrador Retriever breed had its origins in Newfoundland. And because people all over the world and forever have liked to meld things to their own specific needs, over the years the Labrador Retriever has changed from its origins. And now we tend to see a multitudinous what we'll call types. We see what people call British dogs, which to John Q. Public usually means I want a big head, a heavy body, a heavy coat. Or to some other people, British dogs mean I've heard the British dogs are easier going and you don't have to train them very much and they know everything and they're smaller and they don't shed as much. To the American style, which most of the people in the U.S. would equate to our field and performance types dogs who tend to be more energetic, a little more refined in shape, and I equate the difference probably most easily for those of you who ever watched horse races, the conformation Labrador or the show Labrador is quarter horse style, blocky, hefty, short distance. The field or performance Labrador is much more like the thoroughbred, much more elegant, longer limbed, sleeker, much faster, much higher energy. You could transfer it almost to warm bloods versus cold, blo to, uh, cold bloods in horses. Again, the warm bloods are kind of in the middle. The cold bloods are like Percherons, real laid back. And then if you were to get into the hot bloods or the field trial dogs, that would be like our Arabians of the dog world. So it's important when you contact a breeder that you have in mind what you are looking for in a dog. And the big thing you should, the breeder should ask you is, what do you want to do with this dog? I've been asked what I think are the strengths and the weaknesses of the Labrador, and I'll try to cover that in both venues, meaning performance venues as well as confirmation or our beauty contests. And I think when it comes to our confirmation dogs, we need to realize again the function of this breed. And as our bodies get to be heavier, and as they become a greater percentage of the dog relative to leg length, we are functionally limiting their ability to do the work for which they were intended. The strength of the Labrador for both performance dogs and confirmation dogs is their wonderful personalities, attitudes, and trainability. That's something the Labrador will never lose. They are a wonderful, wonderful breed. Our confirmation dogs tend to be very sweet, very amenable, and wonderful dogs to live with, but we need to not have them so overdone, and by overdone, I mean Percheron type, that they are no longer able to function. On the complete flip side of that, many of our field dogs are, have become so elegant and so extreme that they are at risk of damage to joints just due to lack of substance and structure and type. And particularly in field dogs, many of them have totally lost that important water-resistant coat. So we have fallaways on both sides of our venue. I would love to say that I believe that there will be another day when we have another dual champion Labrador. I believe that day has passed us. And for now, and hopefully for a long time to come, we will still be able to have champion master hunters who are able to demonstrate that while beautiful examples of our breed, they also have the body structure and type and the desire and the talent to be able to re be really outstanding working retrievers. We have lots of opportunities to do that uh, today, but both sides need to look at where the other side is coming from and if there is one take home message that I would like to say to everybody, remember regardless of our differences, our unifying factor is we all love the same breed, which is the Labrador Retriever. So big, little, short, long, slick coated, fluffy coated, and whatever black, yellow, or chocolate they come in, 
They are all Labradors, and each of us treasure those dogs for different reasons. बार जर्मनी में ब्रीड किया गया था कैप्टन मैक्स वोर ने 1899 इसका पर्पस था फॉर हार्डिंग इन्हें ओरिजिनली अल्साइटियन बोलते थे ये इनका अल्सास शहर के ऊपर नाम था और ये जर्मनी और फ्रांस के बॉर्डर पे शहर था और 1925 में इसे रीनेम कर दिया गया था और इन्हें जर्मन शैफर्ड बोलने लगे जर्मन प्योर मेल का वेट 30 से 40 के जी होता है और फीमेल का ये देखिए 22 से 30 के जी आपको गैप भी पता चल गया ये फीमेल है यानी और ये मेल है दो दो और इसकी हाइट होती है 60 से 65 सेंटीमीटर मेल की और फीमेल की है 55 से 60 सेंटीमीटर और इनका एज ग्रुप है 9 से 13 इयर्स मैं आपको बताता हूँ कि आप प्योर जर्मन शेफर्ड कैसे पता कर सकते हैं। एक तो अपने प्योर में ये स्लोप ज़्यादा अच्छे होते हैं। आप देख सकते हैं पीछे से ये नीचे होते हैं और आगे से ऊपर। और ये प्योर नहीं अपने ये मिक्स प्रीड है। इन दोनों में आप डिफरेंस देख सकते हैं। इसका स्लोप कम है, ऊ और इनकी टैन बॉडी हो मतलब इनके कलर का देख सकते हो आप डिफरेंस ये देखो इसके लाइट ब्लैक है और ये ब्राउन भी लाइट है इसके डार्क ब्राउन है और कलर ब्लैक भी ज़्यादा डार्क है और इनकी कुछ जो ये टेल होती है ये जैसे क्या कि कर्व है चेकड़ ऑफ ये देखो इसमें राउंड सर्कल है तो जो प्योर ब्रीड ये फीमेल जर्मन शेफर्ड है, इसका साइज भी छोटा होता है मेल से और इसकी वेट भी कम होता है। आप देख सकते हैं इसके कर्व, इसके भी जो टेल है, ये बिल्कुल स्ट्रेट है, इसमें बिल्कुल भी राउंड नहीं है। और आप ये देखिए, ये जर्मन शेफर्ड मिक्स। इसमें देखिए आप टैन बॉडी कम है, इसका पेटर जो ये जर्मन शेफर्ड ब्रीड है, ये इंटीलिट डॉग्स हैं। यहाँ पर सेक्युरिटी परपस के लिए भी यूज़ करते हैं। इनके लिए एक साल में दो बार बाल चलती है, एक बुकिंग में और इसे केयर करने के लिए। वैसे इतना ज़्यादा भी केयर नहीं है, ठीक है, बस बाल चलते हैं। How to select a toy poodle. Poodles are among the smartest dogs available. Toys are the smallest type of poodle and can be wonderful pets. They're friendly, fast learners, and loyal to their owners. If you've decided to get a poodle, take some time during the selection process. Whether you go through a breeder or a rescue, you need to follow some basic guidelines to choose the right dog for you. Choosing your poodle. Observe the area where the animals are kept. When visiting your potential pet, take stock of the area where he is being housed. Whether you're going through a rescue or breeder, you want to make sure conditions are clean. A dog or puppy kept in unsanitary conditions may be at risk for health problems. The area should be relatively clean. If you're looking at a litter of young puppies, it's understandable if there are a few stray droppings. Puppies are not born house trained and the accidents may have just occurred. However, if the floor is covered in droppings, dirt, and other debris, this is not a clean environment. 1. The poodle or poodles should be clean as well. Their fur should not be covered in food or droppings. Their coats should be clean and unmatted. They should also look relatively healthy. Poodles, puppies especially, should not have a bony appearance, too. However, there is one exception. If you're going through a rescue and a dog has just come in, he may still show some signs of neglect such as an emaciated appearance. If animals are being kept in poor conditions, this is a bad sign. If not cared for properly, dogs can develop health conditions, like fleas or ringworm, as well as behavioral problems. You also do not want to give your money to an establishment that is abusing their animals. Speak with the breeder about the health of the parents. If you decide to go through a breeder, ask to see any certificates they have about screening tests they put the parents through. 
Not all breeders do this, in which case you are in the dark about the potential of the parents to pass down genetic disease. If you have an option, patronize a breeder who goes to the trouble of running these tests and can prove their breeding stock is health. Poodles are a generally healthy breed, but you want to know your puppy's family history to spot any health problems that may occur down the road. Hip dysplasia, joint problems, and eye problems like cataracts are common in toy poodles. Chronic conditions, like autoimmune disorders and seizure disorders, may also occur in poodles. If these problems run in a puppy's family, it does not necessarily mean she will inherit them herself. However, it does increase her risk. For If you see any health problems listed on your poodle's history, do some research. If your poodle were to develop this condition, consider whether you could handle this. Health problems vary greatly in terms of care. Some conditions, like Addison's disease, may require long-term treatment that can get costly. Others, like cataracts, can be cleared up with a simple, but expensive, surgery. Poodles have a reputation for being healthy but are subject to a number of conditions which can impact on their life, even in young or middle age, such as luxating patellas or eyesight problems. If you're working with a quality breeder, he will make an effort to breed out serious conditions. 5. Learn about any special concerns when going through a rescue. If you're going through a rescue, you'll want to learn about special concerns. Many dogs placed in a rescue or shelter were abandoned or abused in previous homes. This can lead to behavioral or health problems. Review a dog's history in detail before selecting a rescue poodle. Abuse and neglect are unfortunately common aspects of many rescue dogs' histories. If your poodle has been abused, he may have behavioral problems. He might be skittish or difficult to leave alone. Neglect can also cause health problems. If a dog has been beaten or physically abused, he may have problems with chronic pain. 6. This doesn't mean you shouldn't adopt a dog who has been abused, just be sure you understand that he'll need lots of patience, special attention, love, and training. Some poodles are abandoned because they have existing health problems. Previous owners may have been unwilling or unable to accommodate the dog's needs. Make sure you ask rescue workers about a dog's health. Know what medications he needs, how much treatment costs, and any other special concerns. Look for alert, perky, and responsive animals. Unless you're adopting a very elderly poodle, toy poodles are a generally high-energy breed. Make sure any poodle you purchase is eager and playful. If you're going through a breeder, you may notice a couple of poodles from a litter seem high energy while the others seem a bit sluggish. This is a bad sign. This could mean an illness or infection is going around in the litter. Even if your poodle is not currently sick, she's very likely to get sick later on. Be wary in these situations. 8. Visit a poodle several times before making a final decision. Adopting a dog is a big responsibility. You should visit any poodle you're considering several times before making a decision. Ideally, you should interact with the dog both one-on-one -on -one and observe him with other animals. You want a pet that's affectionate and unafraid of people. You also want to make sure your potential dog gets along with other animals. It can be difficult to have a pet that's aggressive or overly skittish in the presence of other dogs. If you're going through a rescue, it may not be possible to observe your poodle with other dogs. If a dog has known behavioral problems, he may have to be separated from other animals at all times. 9. Take your dog or puppy to the vet within 48 hours. Once you decide on a poodle, take her to the vet within 48 hours of adoption. You want to have a full exam conducted. You should also bring in a stool sample to check for parasites. If something negative comes up in the exam, you can return the poodle. Most breeders and rescues allow you to change your mind about adopting a dog without penalty within a certain time frame. ...include his small size, outsize personality, and variety in coat types and colors. There are top 10 interesting facts about Chihuahua. 1. Origin. An early ancestor of the Chihuahua was the Tecachi, whose origins are known to go back as far as 9th century Mexico. Because the breed is so old, the details of the Tecachi's origins are lost, but some believe that when European explorers eventually came and bred their own dogs with Tecachis, they began the process of creating the modern Chihuahua. 2. Geniuses. Relative to their bodies, chihuahuas have the biggest brain in the dog world. They're quick-witted and easy to train. They're not, however, easy to housebreak as a result of a tiny bladder and a willful personality. As desert dogs, they're also not too keen on the rain or cold. 3. Name. Remains of ancient Aztec Tecachi dogs were discovered in Casas Grandes in the Mexican state of Chihuahua in the mid-19th century. As the modern version of these dogs grew in popularity with American tourists who brought them home to the United States, the breed eventually was given the name Chihuahua, after the region where it originated. 4. Fierce Breed. 
kais are tiny, so they compensate with fierceness. One study found that the tiny pups are one of the most aggressive breeds toward humans and dogs outside their own breed. To combat this, owners are urged to socialize them with other people and dogs early. 5. Soft Head Like human babies, chihuahuas have a soft spot on their heads called molar. But unlike babies, a chihuahua might have the spot for its whole life. Whether or not a chi keeps its soft spot depends on size, genetics, and skeletal structure. Show dogs aren't penalized for having them. 6. Smallest Dog Although the smallest dog in recorded history was a Yorkshire Terrier, the smallest dog breed overall is the Chihuahua. The world's current smallest living dog is a Chihuahua named Miracle Millie, who claimed the Guinness World Record when, on February 21, 2013, she was measured to be an itty bitty 3.8 inches tall. 7. Wild Chihuahuas While most Chihuahuas today prefer lounging in their owner's lap, these small dogs were once adept tree climbers. They've been said to climb trees and near vertical hills with the grace of a squirrel, presumably for warmth and protection from predators. 8. Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe owned lots of pets, including a cat, a bird, a horse and several dogs, one of which was a chihuahua she obtained in 1948 to celebrate signing her breakthrough six-movie contract with Columbia Pictures. Monroe named the Chihuahua Josepha, but the dog was more popularly known to Monroe, her fans and the press by a nickname, Choo Choo. 9. Color. The American Kennel Club lists more than 40 different colors and markings in which Chihuahuas can be found, including black, black and tan, white, cream, chocolate and red, to name just a few. The breed also is officially divided into the two basic groupings of smooth coat, i.e., short hair, and long coat. Some believe the long coat variety comes from interbreeding with Yorkies. 10. Lifespan. Living 15 to 20 years on average, the Chihuahua has one of the longest lifespans of any dog breed. Of course, Smaller breeds tend to live longer than larger ones, but another key factor contributing to the Chihuahua's longevity is the relatively few health problems to which the breed is predisposed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel.
The Beagle is a breed of small to medium-sized dog, a member of the Hound Group. It is similar in appearance to the Foxhound, but smaller with shorter legs and longer, softer ears. Beagles are scent hounds developed primarily for tracking hare, rabbit, deer, and other small game. They have a great sense of smell and tracking instinct that sees them employed as detection dogs for prohibited agricultural imports and foodstuffs in quarantine around the world. Beagles are intelligent but single-minded and popular pets because of their size, even temper, and lack of inherited health problems. Although beagle-type dogs have existed for 2,500 years, the modern breed was developed in Great Britain around the 1830s from several breeds, including the Talbot Hound, the North Country Beagle, the Southern Hound, and possibly the Harrier. Beagles have been depicted in popular culture since Elizabethan times in literature and paintings and more recently in film, television, and comic books. Snoopy of the comic strip Peanuts has been promoted as the world's most famous beagle. Dogs of similar size and purpose to the modern beagle can be traced in ancient Greece back to around the 5th century BC, Xenophon. Born around 430 BC, in his treatise on hunting or Syngeticus refers to a hound that hunted hares by scent and was followed on foot. Small hounds are mentioned in the forest laws of Canute which exempted them from the ordinance which commanded that all dogs capable of running down a stag should have one foot mutilated. If genuine, these laws would confirm that beagle-type dogs were present in England before 1016, but it is likely the laws were written in the Middle Ages to give a sense of antiquity and tradition to forest law. Thank you for watching. For more educational videos, please subscribe to Wiz Science on YouTube or visit wizscience.com.